Hey everybody, this is Gary Fong, and I'm here to discuss a product called the Lifetune One device. And this is uh, came upon my radar because someone in social media contacted me and asked me to test if these things actually do anything on my testing bench. So I took a look at the website, and I got to tell you, it was uh, really kind of an education in how to uh, scare people into feeling like they want to purchase a device. So this is the Aries Tech opening page. And, and, and um, the first thing that I noticed was these two uh, graphical representations of skulls. The one on the left says without Aries, and the one on the right says with Aries. The one on the left has this red, red hot zone uh, that only can be described as a hot zone, and with the Aries, it looks green and pristine. And so the first thing that I noticed was why is the person wearing an EEG cap? Now, an EEG cap is something that you put over and it has like this one is a 19 sensor QEEG uh, that uh, doc, Dr. Dogrease uh, explains is um, is what they're doing the testing on and I know from experiences with EEGs that um, I, I've had EEGs and what they do is they, they put these electrodes on your skull and then they, they give you the you close your eyes and then they give you all these little like flashing light patterns and they want to stimulate different parts of your brain to see how your brain actually uh, uh, responds. And so what happens is if there's an anomaly, like something irregular happens uh, in your brainwave response, which is not typical for people of your profile, and this is what he briefly calls a Z-score uh, or a baseline. The baseline is what most people would react to blinking lights in this color yours isn't. So it's either it's overreacting, underreacting, whatever it is, the red shows an anomaly. And um, so, it, but it doesn't show heat. The electrodes do not show heat. And so in, in this website, they, they explain, it says uh, on the internet, they said, Dr. Dogrease is explaining that the EMR is causing the neurons in your brain to overfire. It doesn't really say that. It's just an anomaly. It might not even do, have anything to do with how your brain fires because there's a moment in the video where he asks the male subject to clench his teeth and you see the 19 needles all go crazy and that would be an anomaly. So that's not heat. That's just not um, expected. So it, they have this cause and effect thing. These you have to be very, very careful when you are advertising uh, to be free of any FCC or fraud claims that you don't have a cause and effect that you can't prove. And what's really most outrageous about this is you would know that there is no heat that is detected through those uh, electrical uh, uh, contacts, conduits. So um, I'll just go ahead and I'll show you the video because this is the part that's, that's really interesting. And, Wherever uh, it's on social media or in their advertising, they say, I highly recommend watching these two videos where we did a study with a neuroscientist to test these products for explanations. Okay, so let's just go ahead and play it. Okay, so we're going to do a brain scan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a 19-channel EEG cap, and it's going to pick up the tiny electrical signals created by your brain. On the right there is what you look like after 10 minutes of having the phone up against your head with no Aries device. That's wild. It's very significant. There's a lot of red on there. That's insane. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when you have the Aries. Oh, huh. it's even better than the baseline. How did they do that? I can't believe how different they are. Honestly, I thought there would be like a little bit of a difference, but this is pretty insane. That's really cool. A small device like that can make such a huge difference. I'm very surprised at how well the device works and I want to like give it to like all my friends and family like you have to have this. Oh my god there's so much red I didn't know this little tiny sticker could do so much stuff. The cause and effect um, intention here to to show you what it does is the problem because it is not red because of heat and the reason why that is uh, that that can scare us because we're all aware uh, in some way or another of thermal photography. Thermal photography, if you've watched movies, you've seen like from a satellite, the soldiers going across the wooded field and they, they glow like this, you know, red for the heat and green and blue. 
and whatever. Or when they're like kind of looking through a building and you can kind of see the bad guy going from room to room through thermal photography, that is what they're seeing. They're not actually seeing in thermal photography a visual image, they're detecting the heat and then producing a graphical representation of what that outline is through the different temperatures, through infrared photography. But this image right here looks scary because it says when you stick this thing up to your head, it becomes red. When you take it away or put a sticker on it, it becomes green. I want you to know that it has nothing at all to do with heat. And the problem where uh, Dr. Dogrees has a uh, credibility issue is to be saying, he says in the video, I'm a scientist, so for me, uh, I really need to see the numbers. It's important to get the data. He says in the video, you know, I'm a science guy. I work with data. And he says the data shows that there was a heating effect from the uh, cell phone. And, and, and uh, I'll go into it a little bit more. I can't wait to show you guys the tests of what happened and the response to the test is, is quite remarkable. So what is thermal photography? Thermal imaging is simply the process of converting infrared radiation into visible images that depict, depict the spatial distribution of temperature differences in a scene viewed by a thermal camera. There's no thermal camera on a person's scalp here. It's just basically electrodes showing QEEG. So what is QEG? A QEG is um, a diagnostic tool that measures electrical activity in the form of brainwave patterns. It is sometimes referred to as brain mapping. So what happens in a QEG is it basically has electrodes and it senses what your brain is doing. Bzz, 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 bzz. That's not heat. Later, uh, Dr. Dogrees attempts to uh, infer that it is the actual neuronal activity of the brain's overstimulation that actually produces the heat. But if it's the brain producing the heat, isn't the brain the culprit in this? He actually says some really interestingly funny things, like he says, you know, people, people really don't understand. understand what the impact of heat is on the body. When you expose the body to an EMF that's really fast in the gigahertz range, there's a lot of spin there. It's gonna create a lot of heat. Heat kills cells. That was the case. And, you know, don't go to Las Vegas, Palm Springs. Um, so um, I asked ChatGBT, does a QEG measure heat? It says, no, a QEG does not measure heat. It's a diagnostic tool, as we know now from this video, that measures and records electrical activity of the brain using electrodes placed on the scalp. It provides information about the brain's electrical patterns and can be used to assess brain function and identify abnormalities. Heat is not directly measured by a QEEG. But this is basically what they're showing you, that it, it is the danger, is he's doing a cause and effect relationship of this to heat, to radiation, to damage, and he sh he's saying that the sticker makes the heat go away. So he's just basically talking pretty much out of his ass at this point. Um, but he says that the, uh, this little sticker reduces the heat. And I'm going to stick to that one part. Because if you make a cause and effect claim, you better know what you're talking about. He says that he's a scientist and he works with data. And he says that the QEEG shows that there was heat and then it was reduced by the Aries uh, sticker. Now, one thing I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to show you the test that I did showing with fabric that is EMF protection fabric, how it completely squelches the flux from the telephone of electric field radiation measured in volts per meter. And then I'm going to show you how the Aries did absolutely nothing. And then I'll show you how the Shungite did the same thing pretty much as the, uh, as the radiation proof fabric. This right here is bona fide military grade EMF fabric. Now nothing can get through this. This is great to wear as clothing. You can, uh, I have a hat that has this and uh, unfortunately you can't make a phone call through it, but it will keep the radiation at bay. <clears throat> So the thing is, is the best kind of radiation protection is to turn off your cell phone and your Wi-Fi routers. And when you can't, uh, when you can like have protective fabric over, you can put that over, but it's on your uh, electronic devices. It will block the signal. This phone is on. Um, it's not blocking any sensors. I do this because people go, oh, you're just blocking the sensor. So it's not blocking the sensors, but it's definitely blocking the radiation. This LifeTune device 
is uh, supposedly has a microprocessor in it that uh, they don't, I think they, they don't say that it blocks EMFs because they can't. They say it harmonizes the EMFs. But here's my thing. We're just going to see if it does anything. Because this thing will show you. EMF fabric protection will kill the flux. Shungite will kill the flux. Let's see if this light tune does anything. Just put it right here. Take it away. Shungite. Take it away. Life tune. So we wonder: is it is it how it's it's being held? Does it is it supposed to go on anything? I'll even try to block the device uh, or shield it in between. Literally, does nothing. Take it out. Shungite again. So not only is the problematic issue that they try to infer that a QEEG shows a cause and effect proof that the sticker reduced heat, um, not only is that problematic, what's also problematic is that they have a claim of 22 patents that protect the Ares nanotechnology. And I went through all of their patents and I could not find a single technology patent that covered nanotechnology whatsoever. And I wanted, the only thing that I could find was one United States design patent that covered the graphical depiction of the artwork of the stencil that is used on the, on the LifeTune device. I could not find anything that showed protection of the nanotechnology invention. You think that medical publications are tough to get into, try the patent office. I'm a person who holds a number of international and United States patents, and I know how to read a patent, and I know the difference between a utility design patent, a utility or a design patent, and I could not find a single utility patent on here. Um, what they show is they say that they have 22 patents, but what they really show is one U.S. design patent, an expired Russian patent that uses the same stencil to cover an optical uh, thing. So something to do with improving your vision, which has nothing to do with harmonizing uh, electromagnetic radiation, as they claim, using nanotechnology. And the thing is, is in a patent, man, you've got to be precise about what you claim, what the original art was the, of people who have done anything like that before you, and why your invention has never been shown. This is called the original art, and you're supposed to submit that. I saw nothing of the like in here. In fact, all I saw was a plurality of Canadian industrial design registration certificates, and those are not patents. So you have to be so careful if you want to stay away from uh, a class action lawsuit, uh, uh, um, a Federal Trade Commission uh, problem. You want to stay clear of that by not claiming that you have patents that you don't own. And I went onto Facebook and I asked them, I said, show me the patent. Uh, you show me the patent number. I, I know how to read a patent. Show me the patent. And they kept saying, oh, well, uh, yeah, they're they're listed here. So I, I just got into a complete runaround. Um, but their patents actually could not find one. So this is really problematic to say that you have 22 different patents here. But when I looked at them, um, you'll see that there's a design patent. There's a design patent in Russia. And a design patent, all it does is it covers the artwork. Now, utility means I've invented a zipper that has interlocking um, uh, levers that when a attachment device comes, it locks the levers, and when it comes back down, it reattaches it. And that is a utility uh, patent. A design patent would say, I've got a zipper that has red teeth on the left and green on the right, and a yellow uh, pull tag. That is a design patent. has nowhere near the broad uh, protection of an invention because it's just basically like a, a trade a trade dress or trademark kind of a claim. And what they've done is they've patented, patented in a design patent the graphical representation of their, um, of their thing. The Russian design patent was something where they used the same artwork, but they claimed that it had something to do with uh, helping your eyesight. So that this is something that's completely 
um, uh, problematic, I think. And I think that it, it exists here so that the public, who doesn't have the breadth of knowledge as a person with a scientific medical background, or a person with a lot of patents. Uh, uh, most people would not know what they are. And when you don't know, you can get snowed. And that's why I feel like a duty to come out here and show you what the problems are with this website and the representation of the product. So the conclusion that Dr. Dogrees comes up with, and it says so right here, he says, we have a device that's not going to cause heat. You don't get as fatigued reducing the heat reducing the cellular damage. It means you're going to be healthier. There's a lot of different things there that are taking us in the right direction. I think that's a pretty good benefit. Okay, so I wanted to wrap this up by saying that we are, or lay people, are so often confused by the information that are given out by people who call themselves scientists. And they say, because science or, you know, um, or you don't understand science. Well, the thing is, is I do understand science, and I do understand when people are being misled. And so these people who are desperate for solutions because they're feeling awful or they're having all kinds of different um, afflictions with radiation exposure, and they go to people who call themselves experts and they say, well, you know, it's this and it's that, and you trust and you believe them. I mean, when I talked to that lady and she was so sad about the fact that she spent so much money and that it did absolutely nothing. And, you know, the thing is, is yes, there is a placebo effect of, uh, you know, having something and going, oh my God, this, this thing is just the most amazing thing ever. There is that, but I want to go past that and do tests to see if there is an efficacy. And the efficacy is, my question is, does it prevent radiation damage? And that's the thing that's important. So when someone says, well, it, it, it something that's purported to be in the press as an EMF blocker, and then later they say, no, it doesn't block radiation, it harmonizes radiation so that it becomes more in tune with the biological radiation of your body, that's completely a fallacy because radiation comes from an emission source. So if your body is emitting radiation and you have a phone that's emitting radiation, then does the two radiating devices cancel, does one radiation device cancel the other when it's, it, it, it's uh, coming from a source? But to say that a sticker is going to prevent, they, they literally on one of their products, it says has a 139 foot uh, radius uh, of protection. To, to say that a sticker will give perimeter protection against radiation harm by taking those things and having, it has multiple microprocessors that are passive. You know, they don't require, they're not active processors, they're passive processors, which is not how a, a microprocessor works at all. Um, and saying that what it does is it takes those waves, it doesn't really block them, it harmonizes them with your natural radiation. That's complete, complete hogwash. And um, to say that is, and then to think that somebody spent over a thousand dollars of their very, very scarce money to buy these stickers, to think that that would help them, find out that they don't help, and I'm sorry, but they ask a person like me who does benchmark tests and says, does this stuff work? It feels bad to show them that it literally is just a sticker. And um, and that's that's hurtful, because, you know, I, I don't know that they'll get their money back. The the false claims and the braggadocio and, and the, the complete gaslighting of facts is something that's pretty hard for me to sit by and watch. Um, it's like it's like watching a train wreck and going, yeah, they, they should definitely probably uh, try to think about safety. To think that these purported experts are out to protect you, and it's going to cost all this money to protect you and your family, and aren't your loved ones worth protecting? That's a real hard uh, proposition. So in taking up the cause of all these people that have been hurt by these practices, I am 
going to definitely take a lot of action to ensure that people are educated and that they can't be snowed. So please share this video around and help other people to look critically at very, very specious claims of efficacy for things like, <laughs> like this. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Got to go.